This is 2OF Entertainment. Good day to you, Paul. Long, long time no speak. Yeah, we've been, it's been a while since we, you know, usually have to deal with that other guy, Stephen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, yeah. oh, well, we're, we're, we're doing well, you know, and our program still continues along nicely, and uh, we appreciate all your support uh, in doing this. And uh, today we have, a, we have a very prolific artist. He's been painting for a long time. Um, Anthony Hobbs from Montreal. Okay. Canada and uh, you know he's got quite a, uh, an oeuvre of, of painting and uh, his history like the, the background where he comes from is not unlike some of the other artists that you know they have a graphic background or a commercial art background and then you know the training that comes in and I, I guess it's and he's also been a teacher but um, you know just the regime of every day doing something get up at the same time go to work and actually get work done and yeah. i think it's really important that artists understand that that that's a really a big piece of you know creating work is motivating yourself to get into the studio and uh, finding out how to be motivated and what things to look for and what things you like to paint anyway i'm gonna maybe we should bring uh, anthony in a little bit yeah, let's bring anthony in and uh well good day good to you morning. Yeah. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> a bit, bit of everything today. Well, uh, I'll, gentlemen, I will leave you to it and um, have a great interview. And I'm really th looking forward to, uh, in the background, to catch up with some of the uh, the work that Anthony's been doing. But uh, you see you all a bit later. Bye bye. Okay. Okay, nice. Bye. Okay, good, um, good day to you, Anthony. Well, this, you know, we, we've sort of known each other for a long time uh online i guess as uh, a longtime member of artists in canada and we mm. appreciate that and uh, i've sort of i've watched your work over a number of years and it, this is a great opportunity to actually share it with people in a different way and uh mm -hmm. to talk live with you about what's going on in your life and yeah i guess we all have our own our own journey i mean you know really it's similar, but it's not like, you know, we have hills and valleys that we go through in our lives. And uh, I think and I think that's what interests people is how I mean, that's how they feel. They connect and say, how how was it for you? How did you do what you do? Can you can you give us a little bit of your background as to <clears throat> kind of where you, you started? Want, you want my whole background? No, I don't want the whole background. <laughs> we have the short version <clears throat> No, uh, as, as I, um, I think I told you, I started out, I um, went to St. Martin School of Art in uh, London to become a, a painter, but I moved from that into uh, graphic design, and uh, for many, for 40 years I was a graphic designer. And then um, I went and did teaching, I was teaching graphic design for quite a few years, and I had my own design practice, and then Eventually, the call of painting, which is what I'd always be wanting to do, kept on calling me, go off and paint and forget about the design business. So eventually, I managed to be able to paint, which is what I've been doing now for maybe 15 years ago. And um, I find it's a very liberating experience. It, it keeps you keep your mind working, keep your eyes uh, looking around and the world is always um, something, it's always um, a brightness or the color or the light or the vision of what you see. As far as um, getting into the studio, well, I think one of the biggest problems is actually the subject matters that you want to paint. Um, I've been I've I've been out painting supposedly painting outside and I'd spend the whole day walking around looking for the idea and never never finding it and then 
returning home and there it was facing me in right in the face. So now I find that I collect these memories and visions and trans translate them into paintings. Yeah. So um, so paint yeah. So paintings don't really have to be specifically of that space. Is it is what you're saying? No, I uh, no, I say that well, first of all I had to be outdoors in the elements painting. I had to have the wind blowing and the sun on my face and the, like it, it tough. You put stones on your easel or stop it blowing over. And <laughs> I guess that's I guess that's part of the British background where it's hard. That's good. Anyway, yeah. eventually I started painting in the studio and I found that. From then on, I, I, I do a lot of sketching outdoors, but I didn't paint it outdoors for a long time now. I find yeah. that painting indoors away from the subject um, allows you to be more creative and make the subject in your own vision. You're not, yeah. as a friend of mine points out, she talks of the tyranny of the landscape where you're, you're looking at the landscape and you're trying to reproduce it as it is. Whereas I take a landscape as a basic, a starting point, and then move on from there. Put right. paint on the um, canvas, and then sort of see what's going to happen. Okay, so that it works like so a lot of artists that are abstract painters kind of work like that too. They get started, and then their mind takes over, and they move stuff around. And I think, I, I think that's legitimate. I mean, we're going to get uh, your first image started up here, and then we can with. Uh, uh, get David to start that for us. There we go. And people can sort of see what we're talking about here. Um, I mean, are, are you somewhat influenced by, uh, you know, the Impressionists a bit uh, in that nature in some of your work? I, I, um, I was very much influenced by um, my fellow Cezanne a long time ago, Matisse. Uh, and then I got and painted um, Diebenkorn. I used to work with sort of somewhere between graphic design and, and, and fine art, you know, I think was, this one here has a bit of that feeling of um, cutting the, the, the painting into thirds. I use an old system of, of uh, grids, so the painting is split up into thirds, and then I find a, the focal so this does have a bit of that uh, abstract look about it. And it's actually yes. called early four. As you can see, the trees are colorful, but there's still green grass. Now, that, situ that actual location does exist. I've seen it, but I didn't paint, sit there and paint it. I don't having seen it. So right. then again, it gives me the chance to do whatever I want with it. Right, yeah, dealing with the textures and the grasses and the things in the foreground and such, just so it's just not a, a flat uh, plane, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah that's right. And then and you'll see in the background, very far over at the top right, there's the hint of the hills in the background. So it gives you a sense of perspective going over the hills. Yeah. The further away. So the playing with a lot of times uh, the backlighting and cross lighting you know, for it. Yeah. A lot of a lot of the paintings that a number of artists are, are always they're all lit from the front, and I and I find it so exciting to start seeing work that is they change the light around a little bit where the sky doesn't have to be blue anymore. You don't have to, you don't have to have things. The sun is in the right corner. You 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 really. In other words, to show where the sun's coming from, you don't have to show the sun. Uh, but there's so many things that um, you have at your, I guess, your tools. In, in Actually, that, you know, I think I think you become a sort of, um, I hate to say the word, a creator, but you you can put the sun as you say, you can put the light wherever you want. You can cheat if you like to call it cheating. You can recreate it in your own. Your own vision, you don't right? Stick. Yeah, no, and that's why when you get away, oops, here we are. As I didn't tell you, I started out life um, when I was sixteen. I wanted to go to art school, but my parents said, "No, you'll never make any money out of that." So the other <laughs> thing I used to like, I became an apprentice chef, 
and eventually a pastry chef and I went to Switzerland for 18 months in, in, in Zurich. And before that, I did six months in France as a commie waiter to give me a broader vision of the hotel business. But it was actually Switzerland, the regimentation of their work that led me towards graphic design. Yeah. And then I had a partner, he was a Swiss partner of Swiss uh, graphic design, and they're very, very rigid, which is fine, but um, I break away from yeah. So on the right, I had a race uh, in Angoulême in France, uh, a waiter's race in the streets. I was, <laughs> just, I was 20 yeah. there, you know. Holy smokes. And the, yeah. the one when I was a chef who was just just uh, about a year and gave it all up and went to art school. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think a lot of us have had journeys where we are have worked on jobs that are opposite to what we actually do as a, as an artist. And uh, but you know what, the pastry chef does have some crossover, and like you said, a Swiss background. And I can see some of that structuring uh, in your design, and I think it's it's actually probably influenced you a little bit as well in in, in your work that you did, and probably even how you taught. I'm assuming that a little bit. Um, because when students come, they're pretty green when they come into your, into the, into the classroom and, and they are trying to find out where, who they are and what they are. And in graphic design, a lot of that, they, they don't want you to rethink and find a personality. You, you basically, you're selling wares, you're selling shoes and you're selling things for other people. So it's, it's good to have a good design background to do that. And you've got mm -hmm. to be very okay. quick about doing work. I find uh, with the, the, the graphic background is when I'm faced with a, a blackness, I have no problem with um, where I put things. This painting here in, that you're showing now, I did a series of patterns of the land. And I took a sort of a basic drawing or situation. It's, Hills do exist, but then they don't I've split them up into to patterns. So you have the the foreground, the middle ground, and then it it creates planes. You have the foreground is uh, much stronger, and then they, as it goes further back, it becomes less, less important. But these were, I quite enjoyed doing these because there is that element of graphic design and art, and I think this is also. The Deben corn came influenced me quite a bit. Yeah, no, it's, it builds nice structures. That, I mean, you're dealing with the different kinds of cropping that happens on those fields and hills, and uh, uh, a lot of that. I, I see that myself in some of the things that I do. I like to I like to play with those patterns, and I guess maybe that's that graphic background a little bit of uh, of placement and structure. Yet you try to control that structure a little bit and give a sense of the movement and, and the light that's in there. So, hmm. but green, green, uh, like, yeah, green is a really tough uh, color for a lot of artists. So you've, you've, you, and you use uh, green a lot. <laughs> well, we, we have a um, house in the country in the Eastern townships and we're surrounded times. I look at all these greens. I think, God, how can you, how can you handle that? But um, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's so many greens. There is, there is, and it's. Uh, but a lot of them, a lot of artists, they, they are confused by that color. I mean, uh, I think warm palette probably or the cool palette, they they're not too bad at. They can handle that. But greens, they can be acrid and they can be warm and they can be a lot of you know. And they get the wrong green going at the wrong yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's true. Yeah. Incidentally, this um, this house we have in the country, um, it reminds me much of England. That's why when we bought it, it was a, that was a catastrophe. It was a terrible place. And, but I looked out and I bought it within 15 minutes because it was reminding me so much of England. Oh. And, uh, we, we've loved it ever since, since yeah. uh, 48 years we've been there. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's lovely. It's a beautiful piece. This is actually a very beautiful piece. Mm, oh, right. yeah. I find your work is is just 
saturated with mood. Like there, there's this mood of day, whether it be early, early, early morning or uh, it, it just there's an there's an essence of mystery. Yeah. I guess I'll eat well, all that. Well, thanks a lot. I, I really getting the mood of the painting is more important than trying to recreate the subject as it is. I mean, this this um, this exact location does not exist except in my own recreation of it. But it's an accumulation of a lot of different images. Um, right. I think it's it's great to do the sky. I like doing the sky. Yeah, getting you know, the sort of softness of it, and then how the the foreground there that is a third of the painting at the bottom. Yeah, the so scale. An old, an old mother's uh, system where they split it up into thirds horizontally and vertically. But um, yeah, this one is quite a big one. That's about uh, by forty, I think it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, can, I quite enjoy so we're doing very little paintings and then additional things. Yeah, there's some things you can really get a larger brush on, and you can think about it in a different way. I like it that you can back up from these things, and they still there's a presence of size, and puts you into that space. What do you What do you feel about when you paint someone like this is trying to get enough depth of field like 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 the you don't have the perspective lines of hydro lines or roads or things like that but what do you what do you no. look to when when you're dealing with this color palette well, and hue well I, I i usually try to um, have a point of interest like in this particular painting you that you're leading towards the uh, i can't point it out here but yeah, um, you're yeah. going towards that corner, yeah. and the clouds oh, yeah. are coming down to there. And then you have the very dark ridge of green, and then behind that you have the cool blues showing the the landscape. So you're actually going through into the painting, right to the. I can almost feel as so I go over the over the to the into the landscape at the back. So I don't put sort of lines of uh, perspective. Take it in consideration, but it's it's usually it's hidden. It's not there. It's not clear. Yeah, no, it still has depth to it, though, and I think it's it's dealing with that. Yeah, that's color really value. important to me. Yeah, no, it's uh, otherwise it just it's flat, right? And it's just like which can be a way yeah. as well, but I think. When you when you try to squeeze a little bit more out of it, I think understanding how one color lays over top of the other one and what color is cool and what color is warm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind well, of the basic see, that you teach, but yeah. In this particular painting, you see that the foreground is pretty strong, but the background is very it's a blue, and blue is very cold, so it takes you away. Yeah, it does. So, yeah. But I, but I but I like the minimalist look of this piece of work. Like it's it's not like you said. It's it's giving you an impression of what's happening and where you are, mm. the time of day. There's a bit of light. The point I like to make is that people say, "Well, where is that? Where is that painting?" And I say, "But it can be anyone to be, because I want the viewer to put their own." feelings into that painting and see what they get out of it. That to be something that they remember, then that's fine. It doesn't have to be a specific yeah. location. So, Some, I mean, that, so, well, so many, somebody, yeah. yeah, so many landscapes are, are regionally based and that is, that is true. And what is, what happens with an artist, you're trying to get some universality into your work and it's really hard as a landscape painter to build universality and where say it could be accepted anywhere in the world when they look at this painting and say, you know, you accept it for what it is. And said, it doesn't have to be Paris or London specifically mm -hmm. or a city scene. I said, well, how do you, how, and I think that's where abstract takes over a little bit. It, it's, it muddies that it could be anywhere, right? The abstract well, can be like that. Just, but, I had a, I had a painting that I had done similar rather like this with different colors and some 
And she said, oh, it reminds me so much of France. Well, it was a long, the only influence of France was the fact that I'd been in France. The subject was not done in France. So again, it's a, the viewer putting their own personality into the painting. So they interact rather than saying, oh, that's such and such a place. I was on holiday there. Yeah. But I think as an artist, do you not carry that in your mind anyway when you paint from your from your mind and you're in your studio painting that landscape? I think you bring a bit of that with you, and not even knowing sure. it's, it's in yeah, it's, it's in, all there. It's all there. It's, it's all right. there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so that, now this painting, our house is. I can't point it out to you, but originally I had my the house in that painting right um see where the light green hits the trees in the back but i i found it made the painting too cute having the house there so <laughs> i got rid of the house yeah and but that's looking directly towards where our house is it's an old house built in 1805 but the view from there you see this has a certain feeling of british landscape Right. Well, that, you know, I look at it, it could be just about anywhere, though. I've seen I've seen in Western Canada, even I've seen seen similar yeah. to this. The colors are greens yeah. as well. But, um, and it, you, you did the comment about taking the house out and it comes down to as soon as you put a man-made structure of defined sides and top and a roof and structure, it's really opposite to the landscape. It's it. And it does draw your attention immediately to that. Why oh, is yeah, that? Because yeah, it was the, it was a very small, very very small bit of white. <laughs> it doesn't so have to right. be very big. Yeah. Uh, I just thought all, it was too too cute. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a brave thing to do is to put one of those in. Um, and uh, I've seen paintings where they work well, and it does tie the human element to the landscape. Um, and I've seen a number of paintings that do that kind of thing and they don't look cute. It's just they're for some reason it's just the way they did it and it's fine. Well Ed, but, Edward Hopper does a lot of that. Right, yeah. And uh I, I the names escape me at the moment. I was gonna speak about a piece. Um but uh there 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 was a, a painting that um it, it showed uh, the north, the north country was just landscape was all austere and ice, and that yet there there was an Inuit building as part of that landscape, and it did show no Inuit at all around, but it was uh, skins and on 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 a on a on a hut and some sleighs. So what it was it was telling a story in, in a different way, mm -hmm. but it also said there was a human element to a very inhumane space, and how could you live in a space like that? But it, it, it mm -hmm. was. Uh, uh, well, I think that's a, a, I, I love drawing. I love, I do life and I love drawing and sketching people, but I much prefer this sort of um, semi abstract right. landscape. Yeah. Oh, here's some, um, yeah. Yeah, I talked to you with, um, yeah, one with a road in it. I got, <laughs> this, uh, again, our house is on the left hand side. You can't see it. And this, people are not too keen on winter paintings. Uh, I've had. Um, what do you I mean think, by win? What do you mean by window uh, paintings? Win winter, winter time. Oh, winter um, painting, winter paintings. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, if you try to sell them in the summer, they they, they don't want. They don't look at this. <laughs> but it, you know it. Anyway. it it's a warm winter. This one is still a bit warm. It's not a real cold yeah, feeling. Well, yeah, yeah it's, it's started to melt. Anyway, yeah. it's quite fun to do. I like, um, I like just the simplicity of winter. But, it it um, does, you know, the, the harshness of white and that, it does, it does force you to design stronger. You, you really need mm -hmm. to really, because the contrasts are so sharp, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially if you have foliage, uh, like trees and forests and roads and things interspersed on them. Sometimes it can look beautiful and 
um, it, it's part of that real design skill that has to come into place when you're when you're designing pieces that are winter based, and it just depends on how cold you want the winter to feel like, and that yeah. <laughs> as to what people want it or not in there around their space. Well, but, if you put blue in the snow, it looks much cool colder. But then you can see how it leads you into the background, up up yeah. the road and to the right. Yeah, I, I found with winter scenes a lot of times really you really need to know your gray palette, and uh, the gray palette is essential uh, mm -hmm. yeah. for for uh, defining a, a landscape, especially snow. Like you know, the A. Y. Jackson had a he could paint snow like, and it could be any color. It's a pinks, and it, you know yeah. you've got a feeling of the Quebec uh, landscape. Yeah, I have a friend, she paints uh, wonderful snow scenes, really good. Right. Yeah, no, it's... Uh... Oh, here we have the fall. Yeah. Full color. This is... Uh, yeah. <clears throat> this is, a, I um, just feel, the real tumultuous sea of green, uh, in the foreground. I feel like I'm in this ocean of waves, and it, there's, there's energy in this piece. Not only the color, but... It, it, <clears throat> It's quite sharp. This is quite a dramatic. Well, you could, if you were able to x ray this painting, find there is about three, four, or five different layers of. Originally, there was a road going up it. There was, um, I don't know, it was more realistic. And then I got fed up with it and I just sort of <laughs> slapped the paint on and created more atmosphere. That's what it boils down to. It's atmosphere, because see the, these brush strokes are everywhere: the sky, the trees, the fields, and yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, you know, you you look at this, and it could be a close-up of uh, a bouquet of flowers. You know, really, yeah. like or yeah, well, a flower garden. If you look at it in that, or it can be the hills and trees. Yeah, so you take a section of it. Just yeah, yeah I quite enjoy painting. Is. Yeah, no, it's it's got a really nice sharp energy in it, and uh, mm -hmm. kind of an impression. Well, again, right. Yeah, my house is hidden amongst the trees. <laughs> your, okay. your house is back there again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, maybe you just come back home, and there it is. You found your spot that you actually like to paint. So, yeah. I think having those. Do you feel it's important for an artist to have those special spots that they they go to regularly to draw energy from and draw from well this is all around me i mean i get up in the morning and it's there and I get in the evening and it's all day so i'm surrounded I'm very lucky there are no there's only one house in the region right. so i'm very lucky to be in that sort of environment yeah when we come back when we come back to montreal it's a bit difficult because uh, <laughs> not quite the same yeah. Do you get away for the winter every once in a while? Get away. Yeah, in the winter? Do you get a, get away in the winter? Oh, go away? Yeah, we go. We've been going to France for three months each winter for the past oh. uh, ten years. Yeah, well you didn't we, quite get away from the snow and rain. <laughs> no. Uh, it's pleasant. The rain. Yeah, the rain is quite still pleasant there. Oh that's it's another, yeah. Yeah, I forget what I call that one. This, yeah. I call it the Sentinels. Or, that again is very close to our house. Yeah. And that was the sort of thing. You get these grey clouds coming in. Yeah, it's, it's very that dramatic. Again is, it's sort of semi abstract. It's, uh, yeah. it's a simple, very simplified. And as you say, the snow, again, underneath that, you create what I call the history of the painting because you. You, you paint, you spray, you sand it, you add paint, you, you keep on adding to it. So behind the, if you look in the foreground, what you see coming from previous paintings. So right. uh, some of it, it gives it an atmosphere. Yeah, the, the layer building is, is, is understanding that. Um, it takes a while. You paint in oil or acrylic? I paint mainly, most of the time in oil. I yeah. find acrylic. I may start in acrylics, but I find that acrylics, to me, they're hard. They're not, they don't have the 
subtlety with oil. With oil paint, you can scrape it away, you can thin it, you can, and it doesn't dry so quickly. Right. And yeah. I, 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 one of the problems I have found is when I go to France, I usually paint in acrylics, but I found it very difficult to move from acrylics into oil, or into acrylics or, or watercolor into oil painting because you're thinking in different terms of what you can do with the paint. Yeah. So, um, takes, it you, takes a while. Do you feel that watercolor is a good spot for a starting artist to start out with? Like as a, to learn their, to <clears throat> learn a medium? Or is it, well, it's frustrating for a lot of them. It's very frustrating. Well, watercolor is very, very difficult. But I think one of the things that bothers me about uh, when I see people uh, trying to learn watercolor, trying to do a, a rep reproduction of what they see. I took a course once with a Canadian artist woman, Lee Lamb, who was a very well-known East uh, from you know, New Brunswick. And one of the things she told me was, remember, it's water in capital letters, color in very small letters. So a <laughs> lot of water, what well, a lot of water, and very little color, so that you're washing it. Otherwise, yeah. it, if you put too much paint, it, 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 it dies. That um, the reflection of the, of the color coming through from the paper. Yeah. But uh, there is I, that tendency to, to want to yeah. paint every. You know, I had a friend, he was doing a drawing in Italy once. And he said, I've got to go. I've got another thousand leaves to paint. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, I found that though I did watercolors and it, 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 in my starting years, because it, I didn't have space. I just did it in the kitchen and it was, in, you know, I could clean up and it was done mostly smaller pieces. Um, but I think it, it gave me a real learning of color, uh, how color mm -hmm. works. And uh, if you, I think if you could master watercolor, you can paint in any medium. I, I really believe that. Um, but I think the color theory carries through in all the other things you work with. Yeah. But, but watercolor is a very, um, you, you, can't mess, you can mess around a bit, but not too much. You can't scrape it away. Yeah. So it's a very demanding thing. Yeah, no, and but it doesn't get the respect that it, it should get respect. And no, it's sort of, no, that's true. It's, no. I mean, if, you, if you take um, some of the our artists, they, they have this tremendous freshness. Yeah. There's a lot of watercolors, but they, they die because there's too much paint, that, whereas it should be sparkling. Yeah, I, I guess in that, in that theory of how watercolor should be done, I mean, you can do some. Look at some Andrew Wyeth paintings and they're, they're very, very saturated colors in some of the water and different scenes, but they're done in layers and different things. He's figured out yeah. how to know his it's colors. Like, like, yeah. When to do the layers. Oh, this is in uh, Collioure in France. It's a chateau. It's built in 1300. Yeah. Um, this is probably one of your more abstract pieces uh, in, in this well, world. It, yeah, it's it just, is yeah. Well, the, the forms are all abstract. There's, there's, there's no, uh, there's no detail at all. Yeah. And the way I've, the way I've treated the sky is sort of um, very fluid. Yeah, it's, it's very yeah. impressive sky uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. But I, I just, mm -hmm. I, I just loved it because the, the structure, it's really, it's grounded really well in the bottom, and I felt mm -hmm. it feels wholesome. It feels like you mm -hmm. want to be a part of this piece. And I guess... Well, it, certainly, it certainly is wholesome. <laughs> the rocks. But again, well, it, it is. Goes off, yeah. it goes, I, I guess it's the... a, yeah, this breakup of space again. You're, you're just over under the third and it's uh, horizontally, but the, your structures on the left side are... They're mm -hmm. not perpendicular to the... Except to the one building, to the landscape. I mean... It's, it gives a different uh, ruggedness to it and, and looseness, mm. yet, yet there's structure. Yeah, but you, you have that very solid, the, the 
the chateau, the castle, very cold, and then you, you have the fluid sky in the, in the background. So it's yeah. a sort of contradiction. Right. But I, li I like it that it's not just a solid blue sky. I mean, you, you have a cloud cover that's mm. the blue comes through, and there's, there's a feeling. It just gives a little sparkle glow in there. So it's not really yeah. about the sky. It's really about the building that's trapped mm -hmm. between forms and shape and the really dark water which really gives a a, a snap I guess to the piece yeah, it, leaves, yeah. It, it, it gives you the foreground yeah, it that's, does that's, yeah no it's it's a it's a lovely piece and I it's just you go from painting looser green landscapes and then you you see one of these and you go oh wow this is I, I like seeing that in show where I, I and I go to an artist and so many of them will paint a series and they're all pretty much the same. Um, it's well, almost... that, that's, you, you hit a very important point there and that is that question of style. Um, um, I wonder so-and-so's painting. I like the way they do it. Well, unfortunately, you look at, um, I don't want to bitch, but all these paintings are the same, the same painting over and over again. Yeah. Um, what I, what I'm painting, I don't know where I'm going with it. I, I treat it. The, the subject really tells me which way to go. I don't. Um, it, there's no formula. I hope. Yeah. Well, uh, and that's good to hear because I hear a lot. A lot of artists they figure they have to have a formula and a and built into their style and. Um, and they're they're filling a market with that. Well, that's, and, people yeah. might say to me, "Well, what style do you paint in?" Well, I, I say, <laughs> "I don't have a style. I just paint." Yeah, yeah. that's. I think yeah, the thing, yeah, the style is there. It's 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 not it's hidden, but it it's still yeah. there. There's a continuity between your work. And uh, it may be not as prevalent to you, but others can see, oh, I know that that's Anthony's work. I can tell by how he, you know, the wispiness of this or the, the light structure mm -hmm. or or actually just even the design breakup of space. Um, those all become part of your oeuvre. That, that. That's, yeah. Well, that's very nice to hear because it really is um, the way I feel. This painting here, which you see, is called um, Black Point in the uh, Eastern Townships. This was a commission painting that I did just a month for a big luxury hotel in um, North Hatley. Um, I've only ever done three commissioned works in my life. The first one was pretty awful. The second one, I said, well, if you like it, if you don't like it, don't take it. This one went beautifully. I painted, I was really very much into the painting and uh, the client was very, very appreciative of it. And um, the new um, um, spa that they've built right on the lake and you can sort of, this painting is in the lane and then you can go out on the balcony and almost, and almost see this subject. How, how large is it? It's, it's four feet by three feet, so it's quite big. It's yeah. all done in oils. Yeah. But again, it's that leading into the painting, going in the corner, and, and imagine going around the corner to the other side of the lake. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I really enjoy doing this one. Uh, normally, I hate doing commit. Well, I I don't do commissions. Because people say, well, I wanted to, I wanted to match the room, or the color doesn't go with my sofa, or anyway, <laughs> I just do what I want to do. And and this, I had a completely free hand, and I just be happy to have done it. Yeah, yeah. The commissions are. I, I can commend some people that have this ability to do them and make their client happy. Um, I did that for thirty some years as a graphic designer. And, uh, and now I just, I paint for myself as much as I can. My mm. commissions of, I've done them, but I prefer not. Um, I mm. find that I have shackles, I have shackles on me when I have commissions and trying to please somebody in some way that rather than saying, and I usually, 
if you don't like it, you don't buy it. Like I'll just put it into my collection and I'll and I'll sell it somewhere else. Hopefully, at some time. You're, you're saying exactly what I think. That's great. <laughs> I think we get to an age at some point where you just say, "To heck with it! I'm I'm just not going to do go down that road anymore. Um, I don't have to go down that road." Um, no, not, absolutely. And yeah, that's why I would hate to be in a hate to be in a visit. Have to rely on selling paintings. Because it gives me uh, tremendous freedom. I like I like selling paintings because it gets gets them out of my studio. But that means that somebody appreciates it, and the money is good for paying pays yeah. for my art materials. But um, to try and live by painting it would be very difficult. The natural name is David Hockney or someone. <laughs> well, he paid his dues in the day too. I think a little bit. And, I went, uh, as, like hell. Yeah, he, he still does. works like hell. Yeah, and I think he, he says when he goes into the studio, it makes him young. I think that's true, also. Yeah, well, I think he can afford large buildings to store his work in too, because some of his work is quite large. It's uh, very large. Yeah, yeah, some of the stuff he's done for the museums as their par permanent collections. Yeah. Oh, here yeah. we are. Uh, I love this piece. This is this is just gorgeous. Um, Thank you. I like, I like the the scratchiness of of sky and the the clouds, but it really gives you a sense of depth because that the whites come forward and that vista in the background. Your eye really wants to go back there, and I think I like lots of searching mm -hmm. searching time mm -hmm. when I look at a person, and there's lots to look at in this one. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot of texture in that. I Again, it's because I, I painted and I painted and I painted to build up a history of the painting. So yeah. you can, in the sky, there are ridges from the underpainting. And it has elements of the patterns of the land. And it's actually called Browns Hill. You can see the road going up to the farmhouse. Well, you can't see it too well, but... Yeah, that's that's and it has a lot of mood to it. I find. Yeah, and you and you say but farmhouse. Really... Yeah, and you say farmhouse, and I go, that could be the edge of a city. Like there's, that's what I'm saying. Like it has a universality mm. to it. This this outside edges <clears throat> of somewhere growing. These are towers. But see, yeah. they in that area they have the, it's like a tower at the end of the road. It's a silage. It's silos, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then there's a, the barn next to it, but it does look like, as you say, a city scope of the hill. Yeah. The, uh, it's, it's. So, I guess it's what how you want to what you want to read into it. I mean, again, you've given people their own interpretation. Interpretation is the word. Yes, and I, yeah. I think if an artist can do that, you not well, you not only expanded your market. A little bit as to who likes the piece of work or what they can see in themselves. Do you feel that mm -hmm. that that look and buy work try to find a sense of themselves in it that they feel that they like that I've been there before or I or those kind of things? Do you think people look for that in a piece of work? I think people react to it because they, there's something familiar about it. Yeah, that um, that would be the word familiar. Yeah, for sure. It's funny. I, I, I have trouble um, putting paintings that I've done in France in 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 in, in Quebec. Mm -hmm. So many people are. It's sort of almost alien to them. Oh, really? The, the, <clears throat> the, this 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 could be anywhere. It's something familiar to a lot of people. Yeah, but again, well, I enjoy it. that's enjoying the painting is what's more important. If I enjoy it, that's fine. If somebody wants to buy it, that's fine also. If not, tant pis, as they say in Quebec. Do you, do you have any galleries in Quebec that you show in? I have a gallery in George uh, Studio Georgeville, which is in the the eastern townships, which is about. An hour and a half uh, southeast of Montreal, and it's a um, an artist group actually, but 
They've sold quite a lot of my work, and um, they're not very. It's a lovely gallery. It's not really in the sense that um, they're pushing. It's it's a very friendly place, and I, I enjoy having my work. And uh, that's about it. I, I I did have a gallery in Montreal once, but it was uh, I found it as a bit of a um, how can I put it. It's a very commercial situation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I understand. Yeah, I understand that. There's. Um, I must tell, I must tell you a joke. Yeah. A very funny thing about um, a big gallery in Montreal. There was this painting. This painting painted boats. And the gallery owner was on once asked, "When is he going to change and stop painting boats?" And the gallery owner said, I hope never. <laughs> well, in the, in, the, in the West, we have mountain galleries. That, that's all the artists paint are mountains, like Banff and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, the Rocky Mountains. And the poor artists have shackles on them, and they're painting mountain paintings for the tourists yeah, that come through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, well, I uh, think that's where I'm, I'm very lucky that I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Well, the artists come and go there, and uh, once you've, it's sort of like a graphic design job. After a while, you can paint mountains in your sleep, and yeah, they sell. You want a mountain? You want yeah. a mountain? How high? <laughs> <laughs> they know how to paint certain mountains, and they just paint them over and over again. No, that's, a, that's a big seller. Yeah, well, some artists. They're, they're really all, <clears throat> some artists really enjoy painting mountains, though, and uh, I just yeah. found they they're really hard. They start looking like uh, gift cards or uh, tourist cards, mm -hmm. like you know, like. And well, I found that, that, is, that exists. That exists everywhere. <clears throat> That's true. Yeah. Oh, here we are. That's it. <clears throat> That's called Elephant Mountain in the background. This is uh, very close to Studio, the Studio Georgeville. It's on the uh, from Agog. Um. But this painting I've changed, I've scraped it all off, and I've, what did I do with it? I, I turned it into a summer painting. Oh, yeah. And I think I use a sander sometimes to get rid of it, so I, that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. But um, that, I have painted, you know, I used to paint. I had an old station wagon I'd paint in the, in, in the car, it is 17. Degrees, but uh, that don't, <laughs> that's not for me today. No, yeah. I think uh, I used to paint outside too. The same thing, winter and spring, and and now I I, I really paint more in the studio from sketches that I've done. I, I won't mm. spend, but I I do like plein air painting on a nice day. But there's usually a bugs or there's always there's always something out there though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's moving that's along. Anyway. Yeah. Wind is usually mm. your biggest enemy. Mm. No, I do outside sketches. This again, so this painting, that actual painting no longer, I painted over it. But um, again, as a fall scene yeah. with the, the fence of our garden. But again, I felt, I felt it was um, a bit too muted. So I actually increased the color the, uh, I made. Um, more colorful trees. I got, I got rid of the fence. I, I actually, I, maybe I abstracted, made it more abstract than this. So this, this one I had found. Yeah, this, this one I had found on uh, your profile page on an artist in Canada, and it's still there. Uh, but, I, and that's where it came uh, from. But, but I, but I, but I, I like. It. Yeah, I, I, I even I don't mind the fence. You know, I'm, I'm looking at, it's sort of, I, I, my, my perception of paintings over the last, especially the last five or 10 years is, has changed. Uh, what I like in a piece of work, um, my, my likes are widening, what I like, but doing a fence well, not necessarily painted every little rail and every little thing on a post, but the implication of a fence is a structure. And how do you put, man-made structures within the freedom of a landscape and you you know you what is the most important thing in a space and it uh you have this railroad track of 
of line and texture going laterally across the page, but it's not straight. It's mm -hmm. it, it's <clears throat> it, it has well, a nice yeah. bounce to it, and it's yeah, not a see. yeah. So the anyway, that was great. <clears throat> yeah, but I but I love the depth in this piece, probably more so going back into the the underbrush. Yeah, yeah, you can see you, you, where the trees are picking up a little bit of the light, and yeah. you can you feel you can go right in there. Yeah, no, that's well, maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe I yeah. should have left it too late. Too late? No, it's you still have record of this one, and it'll be here forever. Anyway, now. It, yeah, so but, I, but I love. It, so. Yeah, you talked about your friend painting a thousand leaves, and you know you you <laughs> did it at one brush stroke or two. And you said, I'm done. I'm going to go have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they're, they're gorgeous because they're just, this is, there's a lovely life. There's good contrast, yet the, the colors all belong <clears throat> together. It's of that season. There's one thing. If there's one thing I would say to anybody is don't be scared of the painting. It's only, it's only oil paint. If you, yeah. so, you can always use another layer. Again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. But so many of us, yeah, we'll step up to a white canvas and draw a blank in our head as to what to do, and you you go just do, like you choose a color palette of the day and start. You know, if I want to do warm colors or cool colors, and if it turns yeah. out, it does. It's yeah, as you, you said, you start off, and and one thing leads to another, and I think. One of the big problems is when do you stop? That is when, when you, you run out of paint. Usually you run out of paint. And it's finished. Yeah. No, I mean, when do you finish a painting? When do you know with it? <laughs> I, I, sometimes I, I, yeah. I sometimes in the evening and then I look at it and, and go to bed. And I, I, I say, well, it's going to cook overnight because sometimes it looks great in the evening. The next morning it looks awful. Sometimes it looks awful in the evening. The next morning it looks okay. So it's like yeah. cooking overnight. I and I've I used to teach a, a workshop, and I told people I told people exactly that. He said it will either get better in the morning or not. And I said your mind changes as to what you see when you're painting it. Uh, you know. And and gladly so, because a lot of times you don't want exactly what you, you're getting an extra, it's like a, a bonus, right? When you find something that, oh, I painted something I didn't realize I painted. Like it was there. And your yeah, mind. That's also very true, yeah. yeah your mind just painted. My, yeah, and you, you know, didn't just. When you're painting, I think your eyes have too much color and then it, overnight you sort of change. <laughs> yeah i think that's the magic of painting I and mean, a lot of times I'll, I'll i'll paint at night as well and come back in the morning and it's a bit of a different painting at times and sometimes it's a, a joy and sometimes you say whoa i didn't realize i did that and you sit down and you look at it for a long period of time yeah that's the joy yeah, of yeah I, uh, you're absolutely right because so often in the morning I sit down and look at what i've done Sort of a surprise. There's occasionally so there's surprise. Yeah. yeah. I think that comes when you're in tune with your work. When like when you it's not so much over concentrating on it, it's just automatic. It just comes and there's automatic kicks in a little bit. You know you're comfortable with say a color and a shape and something, and you don't realize that other stuff is creeped into your work, uh <laughs> crept into your work. And I, I think artists need to sometimes leave that, step away from it, and come back the absolutely. next day at yeah. it and re yeah, real absolutely. Because you can yeah. reach a certain point and then then you'll you'll stop. You, you need exactly. to look at it from a different. Yeah. This one, yeah, well, that one doesn't exist anymore. No, it's like you're gonna have to change your stuff on your profile page. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you get some of your newer stuff up. But, I, I, I found that I, I found that painting was too dark, so I've kept the basic thing, but I painted over it. A yeah. warmer look. Well, it is a dark painting, but you know what? There's a lot of places that you look at some of the really early 18th, 17th century paintings. They were quite dark. Uh, 
They're yeah, beautiful. Well, absolutely. I mean, you've got mm -hmm. figures that were painted almost in black backgrounds, and these figures mm -hmm. are just come out glowing out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this yeah, tree on the right. Yeah. Well, this tree on the right yeah. just pops off the page. Like it's just the right color of green for it's a dark, kind of a somber palette. You know, this one is a little bit maybe this is maybe a mood that you were in at the time. I don't know. You know, there's there's well, yeah. I actually it actually does reflect very much that period. That was at the end of the summer. So it wasn't yet and uh, everything was getting more muted. So uh, it does reflect what was there at that time. But then maybe yeah. I changed them. So I changed the painting. Right. We'll wait and see. Well, that's your it's your it's your choice to do. And I think uh, mm -hmm. it's been a it's been a quick go through, but here's a our last painting here that we'll just talk about here okay. a little bit. <clears throat> Another vertical. This, I mean yeah. Yeah. This is um painting from uh, I see every morning from our bedroom in the garden you see that in the background you have what's called um, um, Owl's Head and um, JP and then you, again you have this leading into the painting and I, that, that's another it changes continuously sometimes it's covered in fog sometimes it's very very bright sometimes it's you can hardly see it but um yeah horizontal the vertical rather i don't do yeah. too many vertical paintings but this yeah. one is um this was actually when i was um painting for that um hotel the commission painting this is the one that i started with mm. and then i we then decided to come down to the lake because the lake is sort of over by the hill of the, well, again, I can't point it out, but the, the lake is there somewhere. So yeah. then we came right down to the lake. So the components there, the trees, the, and so on. But um, yeah, that that's a very moody painting also. Yeah. No, they're, they're fun to paint, uh, you know, to... Uh... Reflect, a, I guess, moody paintings can be really uh, a mirror of your own personality at the time when you're cool. were painting and you're just kind of, well, yeah, right. My, I, I had painted stuff, I remember, years ago when my mom said, oh, I don't like these paintings. You weren't in a very good mood. You, you were in a bad part of your day. And I go, oh, you're right. It did come out in the work. And it was, it was mm -hmm. kind of a, it was kind of a, my, my post-college time. I was in that, it was in a bit of a different funk in the time but it was just like it those feelings come through in your work and uh, absolutely, absolutely. I agree. yeah absolutely because sometimes that, um i've sometimes approached and say oh i'm gonna do a great painting and start <laughs> off with, i don't want to be rude but <laughs> i really messed it up yeah but then well then, then you down to earth and then you really start working on it but yeah. again it's that's part of the challenge it's never the same you're yeah. the same the painting's never the same the atmosphere yeah. is not the same so it's always a challenge every day is a little different i think and i think that's important to 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 look for those and watch them i think it, it makes life worthwhile and painting worthwhile when you can you look at the same space and time and it's changing the light changes and like you said you look out your window and that one day it's foggy the next day it's clear sunny cold mm -hmm. whatever and uh i think uh i remember hearing a story of tom thompson painted 30 days in a row of the same scenes in the country and that was the weather the weather that had changed over 30 days and he painted these 30 small panels in plein air mm -hmm. uh of, of the seasonal change, the daily for the whole month, and it was mm. kind of a, a yeah. nice little. Well, I guess yeah. I'll call it an exercise, but I think uh, I think the, the small panels are more interesting than the finished paintings. To me, you so know, Monet way. did Monet did a whole series of paintings of that haystack from different periods, uh, and, yeah. uh, and Amazon. 
I yeah. finally get bored if I keep on doing the same subject. <laughs> yeah, I give credit to a lot of people who can paint that same scene in a different way all the time. And uh, Monet sort of had that ability to do whether you're painting the the church scenes that he did or the bridges in London or some of those Not things. The iconic pieces that he's been somewhat known for. Well, that's been great. We've had a, a great, great conversation. I yeah, appreciate very, very good. I enjoyed yeah. it. I and like hopefully. your response. Yeah, well, I appreciate that you, you, did, uh, okay. you did amazing work. There's David. Are you back? Oh. Yeah, I was getting rather homesick, Anthony, at the beginning. Although <laughs> it, it, it was very, very much UK. Uh, yeah, UK scenes you were doing. So, uh, yeah, a yeah. little bit homesick. He got a, he's got a tear in his eye. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, well, let, let's put some tears in somebody else's eyes now. Um, we always ask with the, the commercial side of it. So if somebody wanted to purchase one of your paintings, Anthony, how much sort of, what, what sort of price bracket are they, would they be in? <clears throat> Well, let's see. A little one, say about 10 by 10, it could be around 400, going up to something like 2,000, 1,800, 3,000, yeah. something yeah. in that range. Okay. So that's a good range. That's a good, that's a good yeah. average range. It's not bad. And obviously, the, the, the details are on here. You can either contact Anthony via, uh, via Paul and uh, yeah, artists in Canada, can. or if you can't um, get through to that, or you can always leave a comment and we'll pass our details, all these details on. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Paul, for bringing yes. another another great artist to us to share it with us. Yeah, another one next week, and look forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, well, thank uh, you. you'll have thank you. You'll, you'll, well, well, thank you, you Anthony. Thank you for joining us, Anthony. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and you um, it. it'll probably be Stephen. Um, uh, so, you know, there'll be a different vibe as always when he's on the show. But um, yeah, same to everybody. If you like the show and the channel, please subscribe. Subscribe also, of course, to uh, Canadian Art Today. Uh, and if you're interested in art or you're just interested in Canadian art in particular, there is a vast range of shows and interviews that Paul has done uh, through the last year or a year and a half that he's been doing it. And with, we're always thrilled to have him on and to have his guests on. And so don't forget everybody, like and uh, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you all next time on Canadian Art Today. Thank you.